So, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, episode three. I have to say, this show, it just doesn't even struggle in being one of the best anime this season. Like, I honestly feel like there's no story that they couldn't bring up in an episode that isn't going to feel fantastic. And that's a great feeling, because based on how good the production looks, I mean... You look at anything in this show and it just catches your eye and has such adorable animation, a lot of chibi aesthetics to it. It's nice to see that the lore and just the history of the school and the ghosts, the apparitions, it's equally as memorable as such a solid production. And I really hope this gets a second season. I mean, I know it's soon to say we're only three episodes in. We're literally three out of 12 episodes in, and I'm already saying, man, I really hope it gets a second season, but that's how much I'm enjoying it. I really doubt it's going to lessen in quality. I'm sure it's just going to keep getting better and better. The more we see these characters, the more we grow with them, the more wonders we see of this school. I just love everything about this show, and just to see, like, the idea of missing students and how ominous and just really depressing they made that story while also being sort of adorable in a sick and twisted way was really fun. I mean, you have one of the most basic ideas for a tale of the school. You step on the fourth step, you're going to have this horrible thing happen to you, and in a pretty brutal fashion, they kind of explain how you'll get ripped apart, you'll be sucked away, it's very bloody, it's very graphic, and to just see how once again they go into such a horror aesthetic where you basically have like soft acoustics playing with a very creepy voice and radio static, it almost feels like gothic horror, it is completely unnerving, and then it will reel you back in being like, ah, we're just kidding around, it's just a normal school, right? Wink and a nudge. And to really see, like, what they were going for with this episode in particular, it was definitely the most creepy and unnerving episode of Hanako to date, 100%. And I really love that about this show, because it does walk a very thin line of reality and the spiritual world, and to learn once again just a little bit more on how this kind of school operates. Of course, we know about Hanako and his stall, that's his little realm we learned kind of in this episode 100%, and if you're kind of like in their area, you most likely can't defeat them. In this case, it's the stairs. And to just have a character who's basically telling you to go find your body parts, like, hey, I lost my right arm, go find me my left arm, probably a leg and a head next, right? It's like, that is so weird. It's so, it's creepy, but it's also depressing, right? Because you think, like, this is probably someone who ended up dead, probably someone who actually did lose their body parts, and you have it just be like, hey, I used to write on the chalkboard with this. I used to pray with this hand. Like, just help me recover that. But you also don't want to help her because she seems so goddamn creepy, right? And that's something that this episode in particular did a great job at. At really making you a nerd while also making you feel this wave of like, oh, that's kind of cute. That's kind of funny. Or that's a little twisted. But you can't help but love the presentation. I love how it does balance such weird elements to make it feel so perfect in the process. We got our boy Hanako, we got Yasho, we got Minamoto, like, we just have the crew just going for an adventure, and you have such trollish natures from a lot of the characters. I mean, Hanako's the type of character who will say to your face, hey, you're not my assistant, so if you want to come with me, I encourage it, but I'm not going to save you. Like, you probably assume he probably would save him in this situation, but at the same time, he is a little twisted in his own way, so... Maybe his dark humor would take over, and I love how you really don't know where this group would go once they hit that fourth step. Like, I honestly was expecting as soon as they walked on step four, giant mouth would come, teeth and things like that would just chomp on them. I was expecting the worst, I'll be honest. So it was nice to see how it was a nice peaceful transition, but everything about this realm was so unnatural, and I really like that. I think it just has this way of bringing yokai stories to life in a way that I haven't really seen done exactly like this. Like, obviously, the idea of a lot of the tales, the basically the legends of the school, things like that, how they come alive, I've seen that done before, but the way they're blending such adorable presentations in terms of bringing a horror aesthetic to life is something that really does feel new and refreshing, and I think this was like the perfect team to helm this adaptation. Anytime you see any adaptation announced, you always hear... Either a lot of people will be excited, a lot of people against it, but there's a good amount of like, oh, I, I kind of like this studio or I like this director, but I'm not totally sure if they're the right fit. But something like this absolutely should have been handled by Lurch. I mean, they are really bringing it to life in such a way that even when they don't shift up the style all that much, there still is a unique presence to it. The amount of times you look at characters in an almost chibi form, they'll either put a couple of dots on the eyes, they'll kind of like warp the character model just a little bit around, and even if they aren't changing it drastically, they're changing it just enough to make it feel like a refreshing scene, something we haven't seen in the past few minutes, 
and also just matching the atmosphere at hand and they're doing a great job at that easily my favorite part of the show so far after watching three episodes is honestly the legends of the school i really like hearing how obviously like we know these legends are probably true after seeing everything that we have seen up to this point but I like seeing characters who either don't believe in it or they do believe in it but are passing it off as being pretty mundane like aha yeah it actually doesn't exist even though in the back of their mind they know it does. I like seeing how these legends are passed around how they're interpreted by others either because someone knows they exist or they just think it's a dumb story and that dumb story can erase you from existence which is a terrifying thing like honestly just imagining that you have a connection to the spiritual world so when something spiritual happens you still know of whatever was before, what's going to come after. But most of these characters walk in saying, who are you talking about? The person who looked after the flowers is this dumbass. Like, this person doesn't exist. Are you feeling all right? That has to be such a heartbreaking feeling. Like, even though you know you have a chance to probably save your friend, there's never a guarantee, especially because these stories really take a hold and become something really different. Like, just look at those cute little bunny-looking critters, right? They were the most devastating thing we could see, and now they're back to being adorable because the rumor was changed. And the idea that your best friend can just poof out of thin air, and there's no guarantee that you can save them, like, that is a heartbreaking feeling. Just imagining that even yourself one day could just not exist because of something happening. You stepped on a stair. Like, that is one of the most devastating, like, objects in a school, that you have to go to a room, and if you touch the four stair, you're just gonna be sucked away. Like, that is just madness, but I love that, because I want this school to feel like a playground, both a devastating playground, but a comfy one. And depending on the episode, depending on perspective, it's gonna feel like either one of those. Sometimes we're going to see apparitions and spirits and jokes and cute and comfy scenes, and we're gonna say, oh, that's really funny, that's wholesome, and then we're also going to see the other side where it does go out of control and body parts and blood fly in every which direction. And that's why this show is going to continue to excel without a single doubt in my mind. I mean, the fact that they can literally talk about destroying a body, ripping it apart, and then switch so naturally to just adorable cheapiness, it says a hell of a lot that it's both to be taken incredibly serious, but also make it be like a joke, where you're like, ah, it's not really gonna happen, you have your few laughs, and then you realize, oh shit, it actually did happen. And that's such a refreshing feeling, because usually with like a yokai series, they kind of stick to one or the other. It's super cute and comfy, or it's pretty spiritual, it's pretty unnerving. So I like how this show, it kind of is balancing both pretty well. Like, obviously, the first two episodes, there was more on the comfy side with a little bit of elements of darker undertones. I mean, look at last week, Hanako's backstory. Like, obviously, it has its depressing moments, but this episode, I think, walked the 50-50 line the best, where a good half I thought was adorable and a good half I thought was absolutely bone-chilling, and I love that. I love to have a series and cast of characters that can make me laugh or make me terrified, just depending on the moment at hand, and that is going to do a hell of a lot for the character development and just individual scenes that we're going to experience in this season. And I mean, I can just only imagine it will get better and better over time if we get a second season, hell, if we get a third season, right? I just can't even imagine how great it will become. And I'm so happy to see the amount of passion being put into this because it is bone chilling. It feels like a gothic horror. It feels like every time the music's there, on one hand, it sounds beautiful, but on the other hand, it sounds so creepy and menacing. And backed by a character like Hanako who can say things even if he doesn't fluctuate his voice depending on those eyes the way he delivers a line can either send daggers towards you or send hearts towards you right i mean there's so many flirtatious and just romantic undertones throughout this series like there's so many times we caught a girl getting hot and bothered or just stuffing her bra and you know making it look like she has a big chest and you just laugh you have fun and then a minute later you're like oh god i'm actually kind of terrified and i love that and on the topic of that whole situation like i've seen this plenty of times where like oh you know the boys are getting all like oh look at the porno magazines they're like oh i don't want to look at that as they kind of like look from the sidelines there and then you got the girl to be like well i'm a girl too well maybe that's actually bigger is better i love seeing how she tried to legitimately pass it off as normal in her mind she probably thought oh we're in a spiritual world something like this maybe just could happen and how when it just all comes crumbling down they don't even make fun of her we're just not going to say anything it's okay and just how embarrassed she gets one of the funnier moments in this series for sure especially surrounded by such a weird setting that just was making me so creepy and then you have a scene pass off as one of the funniest things and I just feel like, yep, that was a natural transition, and I love it. This show is exceptional, still like top three of the season for me. I love every single minute of it. It is so goddamn good, 
and I just keep wishing I had more episodes. It is such an addicting watch, and I mean, unless they confirm a second season, like, pretty soon after the first season ends, I'll probably go back and, you know, check out the manga. I started the manga just to see if this was a good show to watch for this season, and I read a few chapters, like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a good show. But I am hooked at this point in time now, so I can't wait to see where it's gonna go, and hopefully we'll get a season two as well. I know it's early, but... When you give me this much quality, I'm definitely going to be craving more sooner rather than later. What did everyone think for fans of the source material anime originals like myself? What did you think? Let me know. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you're happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.